I've got a bunch of portable USB drives and I would like to consolidate all this data onto a NAS uh, or network attached storage uh, using true NAS scale. Uh, this will allow me to share files over my network and more importantly on a budget. Let's go. I've been eyeing a NAS for my home for quite some time. Uh, however, these dedicated NAS devices are quite pricey, uh, e even without the drives. So I'd figured I'd turn my recently freed up server into a NAS using true NAS scale. Uh, this is a proper NAS OS, uh, which is easy to learn and easy to use. I'll be using my old PowerEdge T30. Uh, all the services running on this box were recently migrated to a mini PC. Uh, if you're interested in this process, I'll put a link in the description and add a card to the video. This server has an Intel Xeon E3 1225V5 processor. Uh, in addition, it has 8 gigs of ECC memory. Uh, ECC is error correction code uh, memory, and it's typically used uh, in servers, and it detects and corrects data corruption, uh, which occurs in memory. Uh, although I know a lot of users use uh, non-ECC memory, I figured I'd play it safe. Uh, the choice is yours and your tolerance for data corruption. Uh, TrueNAS Scale does allow you to run containers and VMs. However, I don't plan on spinning up too many of those, so 8 gigs should be fine for me. This server supports uh, four SATA drives, uh, which will be enough in my situation. I have a uh, 250 gig Samsung SSD drive for the uh, TrueNAS boot device. And for uh, storage, I purchased uh, two Seagate Enterprise class hard drives, which I will be setting up in a RAID 1 mirror for redundancy. I'll put a link to these drives in the description below. All right, let's begin the install. All right, now we're at the uh, true NAS scale uh, download site. I do want to go over the uh, minimum requirements. Uh, looks like it's a uh, dual core 64 bit CPU, eight gigs of RAM, although 16 gigs is recommended, uh, 16 gig SSD boot device, and two identically sized devices, a network port, and uh, looks like it calls out that uh, hardware RAID is not required. And now let's start the uh, download process. Uh, just scroll down and I've already signed up. So I'm going to click on no thank you. I have already signed up. I'm going to go with uh, the most recent stable release. Download stable. And the ISO finally finished downloading. Uh, I'm going to use Rufus to convert the uh, ISO into a bootable USB. Uh, I inserted a uh, 4 gig USB drive. I am now going to select the uh, TrueNAS ISO. And let's see, let's label it TrueNAS. And I'm going to click start. Okay. The bootable USB drive has been created, inserted into the server, and now I'm going to change the boot order so that it boots from the uh, USB drive. Apply. Exit. Okay, let's begin the installation. And we're going to select install upgrade. And we're going to perform the install on the Samsung SSD. Let's select fresh install. Format boot device. And it's going to warn us saying that it's going to um, delete all the partitions and admin user let's select a strong password and select OK create a swap file we got plenty of space so let's do that
allow EFI boot. We're going to select yes. And now the install starts. Uh, this part takes a while, so I'll be back once the uh, install is completed. And after a few minutes, the install completed successfully. Clicking OK. And I'm going to reboot the system. And don't forget to remove the USB drive prior to the uh, reboot. And after the reboot, uh, take note of the IP address of the TrueNAS server, 192.168.1.230. And uh, what we'll do is we'll continue on with the uh, installation slash configuration uh, from my workstation. All right, let's log into our TrueNAS server. All right, here we see some uh, system information. We got the, uh, the version that we're running. Uh, in addition, we can see our CPU utilization and memory. All right, now we're gonna create a pool. Let's go into storage, create pool. Um, as far as the name, I'm gonna call it uh, pool 01. So our tier three disk type, and it's in a RAID one configuration. Next, uh, as far as the data, the uh, VDEV type, uh, we're gonna use a mirror, and it automatically selects the uh, two disks uh, in that server. Click next. Um, I'm gonna keep everything default. Next, spare, next cache next metadata next ddupe next and we're going to create the pool nothing fancy confirm continue That was quick. Uh, and here we see our new pool. Confirming it is in a mirrored config. We got uh, 3.6 terabytes to work with. Disk health looks good. ZFS health also looks good. All right, let's continue with the setup process. Now that the pool has been created, let's create a data set. So we're going to select the uh, newly created pool, add data set, and for the name, I'm just going to call it Ken's Share. And I'm going to specify that the share type is SMB. Click Save. And there we have it. We have the uh, data set within our newly created pool. And now let's create a user. I'm gonna go to credentials, local users, and add. I'm gonna create a user called Ken. Let's enter in a password. And I'm going to keep all the defaults, click Save. And here we have our new user. Now let's add a SMB share. Let's go to Shares, Add. And for the path, we're going to drill down to the pool, Can Share. Uh, the name is automatically populated, and click Save. Service is not currently running. Yep, and we definitely want it to start automatically. Enable service. 
Nice. And we see the uh, new share. And now let's uh, allow the local Ken user access to the new share. Let's edit the ACL. Uh, we want to add an item. We want to add a user. We're going to select the local Ken account. And uh, modify permissions is uh, good enough. So let's save the ACL. All right, let's test the new share, start, run. Let's enter in the IP address of the TrueNAS server, 192.168.1.230. Okay, let's enter in the local pass uh, username and password. And this is to the uh, TrueNAS server. Nice, and we do see the uh, new share. And let's just test it out. Let's create a new file. Test. Test, test, test. Nice, looks good. And one of the uh, benefits of TrueNAS Scale is you can create VMs and install apps onto it. So given that my CPU utilization and my memory utilization look good, I'm gonna try to add Pi-hole. So I'm gonna click Apps. Check available apps. And let's specify Pi-hole. Nice. Um, and we're going to install PyHole onto the uh, existing pool. All right, it looks like it's already pulling down uh, the container. Okay, gonna agree. And now we're at the PyHole installer. Since this is gonna be my backup redundant PyHole, I'm gonna name it PyHole02, web password, make it something secure. I keep everything for the most part default. Web port's going to be 2720. It's going to dump the uh, files into the IX volume that was just created. And since uh, PyHole isn't very memory intensive, I'm going to drop it from 8 gigs down to 1. And let's click install. It shows up as deploying. We could look at the uh, events. Looks like it's pulling the image now. Successfully pulled the image. And the uh, container has been created. Actually, let's refresh. Still deploying. And here we see it in a running state. And from here we could go to the uh, web portal. Gonna enter the uh, admin password. And here you go. We have a uh, working instance of PyHole. 
And if you want to look at the details, uh, you could see the ports that are used. Uh, of course, 53 is being uh, used in addition to the uh, 2720 uh, that was created uh, when we spun up this container. I'm going to click Edit on the interface. I'm going to uncheck DHCP. Uh, we are then going to add an alias. So 192.168.1.230. And it's going to be a slash 24. Click Save. Let's relaunch Chrome. Make sure we're able to access that server. Nice. And then just want to confirm that the settings took. So no more DHCP, and uh, we specified the static IP address. So after the initial deployment, I was getting a hard drive temperature issue. So uh, what I did was uh, move one of the drives from this location up here. And uh, the fact that they're no longer stacked on top of each other uh, drastically reduced the uh, temperatures. I've been using this system for nearly a week and I've been extremely happy with this system. Uh, other than the uh, temp issue I'd mentioned earlier, it's been running flawlessly. I created multiple SMB shares and have copied gigs upon gigs of data onto it. Uh, let's see. Storage utilization is at 4.8%. Uh, ZFS health is good. Uh, disk health is also good. Uh, no errors. Temperatures look good at around uh, 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, data protection. I have scrubs as well as uh, short and long smart tests scheduled to run. Um, I do plan on using the uh, cloud sync function. Uh, you know, if enough people are interested, I'll create a video on that. Um, uh, the apps, uh, the uh, PyHole container has been running without an issue. Um, I did receive an alert that an update was available. I literally just clicked the upgrade button and the container was upgraded uh, automatically. Uh, no drama. Reporting, uh, we could see the CPU percentage, uh, the temperature, uh, processes. Uh, disks, we could see the uh, reads and writes for each one of the uh, disks, uh, as well as the temperature. So it looks like we got one at uh, 41 degrees, the other one at 45. I'm usually pretty happy at under 50 degrees. Um, that said, I may add a fan to the system. And let's take a quick peek at the memory. And by design, looks like a majority of the memory is being used. Uh, four gigs is used for caching. And I just wanted to confirm that uh, the memory isn't being swapped out to disk. Once again, I've been extremely happy with this NAS, uh, especially when you consider the cost. Uh, fortunately, I did have a spare system to use, uh, but for the cost of two enterprise class SATA disks and the free yet extremely robust uh, TrueNAS Scale OS, I have an extremely capable NAS for home use. I'll put a link to the TrueNAS download as well as the disks I used in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please consider clicking like and becoming a subscriber. Thank you.